What is leukopenia? A leukopenia is a low white blood cell count that happens when you have a lower than normal numbers of white blood cells. Specifically, you have a fewer neutrophils than normal. Neutrophils are white blood cells that act as your immune system's first line of defense. Without enough white blood cells, you're more vulnerable to developing infections. A white blood cell count that's less than 4,000 cells per microliter of blood is a low white blood cell count. Normal white blood cell counts vary depending on age and sex. For example, the white blood cell count for men, people designated male at birth and children, is 5,000 to 10,000 cells per microliter of blood. The normal range for women and people designated female at birth is 4,500 to 11,000 microliters of blood. What causes of leukopenia? Many diseases and conditions can cause leukopenia such as blood cell or bone marrow conditions, treatments for cancer, congenital disorders, infectious diseases, autoimmune disorders, malnutrition, and lastly, medications. The first cause is blood cell or bone marrow conditions. White blood cells originate from the stem cells in the bone marrow. Because of these conditions, it affects blood cells or the bone marrow can lead to leukopenia. Some examples of such conditions include aplastic anemia, leukemia, lymphoma, multiple myeloma, myelodysplastic syndrome, myeloproliferative syndrome, and lastly, myelofibrosis. The second cause is treatments for cancer. Cancer treatments are aimed at targeting and eliminating rapidly dividing cancer cells within your body. However, because blood cells also grow rapidly, some cancer treatments can destroy these cells as well. The cancer treatments that may lead to leukopenia include First is the chemotherapy, second radiation therapy, especially when used on large bones such as in your legs and pelvis, and lastly, bone marrow transplants. The third cause is congenital disorders. These are present at birth. The ones that can lead to leukopenia include conditions that can affect how bone marrow works to make blood cells, such as Cosman syndrome or severe congenital neutropenia and myelocatexis. The fourth cause is infectious diseases. Several infectious diseases that can cause leukopenia include HIV or AIDS, tuberculosis, viral hepatitis, malaria, and typhoid fever. The fifth cause is autoimmune disorders such as lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, Sjogren's syndrome. The next cause is malnutrition. Leukopenia can be caused by vitamin or mineral deficiencies, such as deficiencies in vitamin B12, folate, copper, and zinc. And lastly, medications. Certain medications can also cause leukopenia 
as a side effect. Some examples are clozapine. It is an antipsychotic medication. Sodium valparate and lamotrigine. It is an antipileptic agent. Next is immunosuppressive drugs such as Cyrolimus, mycophenolate mofetin, tacrolimus, and cyclosporin that are used in transplant patients. Next up, we will be talking about the pathophysiology of leukopenia. Leukopenia is a decrease in white blood cell count that is below 4,000 microliters in blood. The normal value for WBC is 4,000 to 11,000 microliters. The blood is made up of many different cells, which includes leukocytes, which are white blood cells. Leukocytes are an essential part of the immune system. They help the body fight off infections and diseases. When a person is lacking and not producing enough leukocytes, the person will be diagnosed with leukopenia. There are several types of these disorders. It all just depends on which type of white blood cell is low. Because of the destruction of white blood cells, the person may feel ill for a long period of time, such as having night sweats, cough, or shortness of breath. Those are just some of the many symptoms. The symptoms also depend on how severe or how low the white blood cells are. Sometimes, because of not functioning properly and being so low, it can actually cause a person to not have any symptoms or be alert of infection or disease. The different types of white blood cells are basophils, eosinophils, lymphocytes, monocytes, neutrophil cells that are found in the blood that protect the body from different types of infections. There are other conditions that may cause leukopenia, such as cancer, autoimmune disorders, influenza, viruses, and bone marrow conditions. Diagnostic test for leukopenia. How can leukopenia be diagnosed and what do these tests do? These include the complete blood count or CBC. This count will determine the amount of white blood cells in the bloodstream and help to determine the severity of the blood. A count lower than 4,000 white blood cells per microliter of blood is considered a low white blood cell count. For the other test of for leukopenia, a bone marrow biopsy also will be done. Bone marrow biopsy is a procedure used by the doctors to diagnose and monitor blood and marrow diseases, including some cancers, as well as fevers of unknown origin. And for the last diagnostic test for leukopenia, these include the flow cytometry, this is to rule out leukemia, and this technique, cells in chromosomes are counted and examined by suspending them in a fluid and passing them through an electron detection apparatus. What are the clinical manifestations of leukopenia? So these include the lymphadenopathy or known as the white blood cells diseases. Includes the joint swelling and pain. Includes also the weight loss. The anorexia. Includes hepatomegaly or known as the enlargement of the liver. Includes the splenomegaly or known as the enlargement of the spleen and includes the opportunistic organisms, infections, and immunocompromised hosts or IOS. IOS are defined as infections 
occurring due to bacteria, fungi, viruses, or parasites that normally do not cause a disease, but become pathogenic when the body's defense system is impaired. And lastly, it includes the infections difficult to manage. Hello everyone, my name is Yasser Fitwi from the section NCA and I'm here to provide you with the medical and nursing interventions of leukopenia. First, let's start with the medical interventions. If the medication induced, the offending agent is stopped immediately if possible. Underlying neoplasm can temporarily but with bone marrow recovery may improve, may improve it. Withholding or reducing the dose of chemotherapy and radiation therapy may be required immunologic disorder. Corticosteroid may be used. The use of growth factors such as GCSF or granulos granulocyte macrophage colony stimulating factor can be effective when the cause of neutropenia is decreased production. Cultures of blood, urine, and sputum as well as a chest x-ray are done. Adequate therapy against the infectious organisms, broad spectrum antibiotics are initiated as soon as the cultures are obtained. The antibiotics may be changed after a culture and sensitivity results are available. Now let's move on to the nursing interventions. For the nursing interventions, everyone must perform hand hygiene before entering patients with the patient's room in each and every day, in each and every time. Allow no one with a cold or sore throat to come in contact with the patient at home. Change water in containers every shift. Ensure room is clean daily. Provide low microbial diets. Encourage adequate hydration. Avoid hubastories, enemas, and rectal temperatures. Practice deep breathing with incentive spirometer every four hours while awake. Prevent skin dryness with water soluble lubricants, especially with high risk areas. Example of this high risk, high risk areas are lips, corners of mouth, elbows, feet, and bony prominences. Provide meticulous total body hygiene daily, preferably antimicrobial solution, including perennial care after every bowel movement. Provide thorough oral hygiene after meals and every four hours while awake. Warm saline or salts and soda solution is effective to avoid you and avoid use of lemon glycerin swabs, commercial mouth washing, and hydrogen peroxide. Avoid plastic cannulas for peripheral IVs when ANC is less than 500 cubic millimeters if possible. A central vascular access device is preferred for a long-term and, and, or intensive IV therapy. Inspect IV sites every shift. Monitor closely for any discomfort. Erythema may not be present. Cleanse skin with antimicrobial solution before fin venture unless the patient is allergic. And lastly, administer antimicrobial agent on time. Thank you everyone for listening.